Cinematic Urbanism As an urban planning student who is also a film buff, I want to share a list of selected city-themed films that are important to watch and learn further. Some films explore urban life that reflects reality and its society. Some also produce imaginary urbanism through the construction of urban spaces fantasy. First, City of God, a realistic look of the notorious slum in Rio de Janeiro. Based on real events, the film depicts people who live, die, win, lose, and struggle in the middle of Rio's notorious slum, City of God, aka Cidade de Deus. It does not only reveal the dark side, gang war, drug trafficking, bloodshed, but also the bright, dreams, love, and ambition. The story focuses on a contrasting point of view between a boy who dreams of becoming a photographer and another boy who wants to build a drug empire. Cidade de Deus is a real housing project planned and developed by the government in the west suburb of Brazil's capital as part of the Vavilis or slum clearance policy, but end up becoming another slum that was made up of low socioeconomic communities. Despite being praised for capturing real issues in a real location with most of the actors who were from real-life favelas, the film was criticized for giving a social stigma that favelas are mostly related to issues of poverty, violence, and poor living conditions. After the film rose to fame, several improvement campaigns were given to both public policies and public security within the country. The film was nominated for four Academy Awards, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Cinematography, and Best Film Editing. The nominees for Best Adapted Screenplay are... Braulio Montevani for City of God, based on the novel Cidade de Deus by Paolo Linz. This is Vickers van Merve from MNU. And uh, we are yet to serve you an eviction notice. You just put your screw on there. The second film, District 9, Tire of Racism and Social Segregation. Alien invasion films usually depict the aliens as the invader and villain to humans, but not in District 9. The aliens are described as submissive, filthy creatures and are lower in rank than humans. District 9 is a terrestrial refugee camp turned slum in Johannesburg, South Africa, where the inhabitants are millions of sick and malnourished aliens. Over the years, the aliens lived in a segregated area and became the target of mistrust and racism, or in this case, speciesism, from the local people. The story was inspired by events in District 6 during the Appetite Era. District 6 is a former residential area in Cape Town where thousands of colored people who lived there for generations were forced to leave their homes by law because of the color of their skin. The place was declared a white-only area by the government. The whole film is a metaphor to racial conflict and segregation in South Africa, where the alien situation represents the victims of the apartheid regime. The film was nominated for four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Film Editing, and Best Filmed Effects. Third, Pompoko, Tanuki vs. Urban Development. This is such an underrated Studio Ghibli film. Directed by Isao Takahata, the man behind the anti-war masterpiece Grave of the Fireflies, Pompoko is a tragic comedy fantasy drama about a pack of tanuki, or a Japanese raccoon dog, 
who are threatened by a new urban development project called Taman New Town, which is blind to other species' lives and severely cutting their forest habitat. They decided to stop the development by shape-shift into people or objects, tried to blend in with humans, committed eco-terrorism, and so on. The film is based on the actual urbanization and eco-politics context. Tama New Town is a real residential development project in Tokyo and currently is the largest in Japan. With a combination of Japanese folklore about shape-shifting tanuki, the film seems pretty silly, but it actually explores the coexistence between humanity and nature. Also a strong message to stop exploiting the environment only for the sake of human's convenience. Takahata said, In Japan, deforestation deprives the tanuki of their natural habitat, and for these animals, it is a real problem. It is a tragedy. But just like a bittersweet reality, despite every desperate attempt to get rid of humans, urbanization and deforestation do not stop. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah. We've become bored with watching actors give us phony emotions. We're tired of pyrotechnics and special effects. While the world he inhabits is in some respects counterfeit, there's nothing fake about Truman himself. No scripts, no cue cards. It isn't always Shakespeare, but it's genuine. It's a life. The last film is The Truman Show, Living in a Fake City. Truman is unaware that he has lived his entire life since birth in a fake master-planned city located inside a massive dome studio. His house, neighborhood, and everything in the city of Sea Heaven are part of complete filming set for a 24-7 reality TV program called The Truman Show. Now, going Years wasted. I'll make it up to you, son. I swear. Dad. Yes! Not until the 30th anniversary of the show did Truman eventually begin to notice the abnormalities of his surroundings and felt like being watched. The film is a satire of both over-controlled reality TV shows and urban planning or design. Sea Heaven was filmed in Seaside, a real small town in Florida, which is one of the first master-planned communities in America, designed on the principles of new urbanism. Mainly focuses on building settlements at a human scale that features simplicity, walkable neighborhoods, livable environments, and so on. Despite the welcoming and utopian design, it does look so artificial and unnatural. Director Peter Weir chose Seaside because he believed the city looked fake, which complements Truman's fake reality. The film was nominated for three Academy Awards, Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Original Screenplay. <laughs> 